When you have zero Splash Brothers, what does that give you? The bottom spot in the NBA. When you have one Splash Brother, what does that give you? A play-in position. When you have two Splash Brothers, what does that give you? A lot of threes, a lot of highlights, and just a little piece of golden hardware called the Larry O'Brien Championship Trophy. The 2021-2022 Golden State Warriors training camp starts in about a month and a half. And today, we're going to go over the whole entire Warriors roster and break it down in order to show you just how loaded and deadly Dub Nation is going to be this upcoming season. I'll start first with the point guards and make my way up to the centers. Point guard number one, Stephen Curry. Seth on step. Curry for three. It's good. Eight three-pointer. This is the man that really needs no introductions. I mean, two-time MVP, three-time champion, best shooter in the history of the NBA. Last season, Steph averaged 32 points while shooting 48% from the field, 42% from three, and 92% from the free throw line. He'll be the starting point guard without question. Point guard number two, Jordan Poole. Stan Van Gundy back in the Northern California. Jordan Poole is listed as a shooting guard, but let's not kid ourselves. The man has the ability to break down his defenders and make plays for his team. Last season, JP averaged 12 points while shooting 43% from the field, 35% from three, and 88% at the free throw line. Not bad for a second year backup guard. Jordan Poole will be the primary ball handler when Steph is on the bench, and I predict he'll be at the very least a finalist for the Sixth Man of the Year award. Point guard number three, Ja'Cory McLaughlin. Banking early in this first half if you have all your, your ammo. McLaughlin from 15, yes. Some of y'all might not know this dude yet, but NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski recently reported that Ja'Cory has recently reached a deal with the Warriors. He's a 23-year-old 6'5 point guard coming out of UC Santa Barbara. And I gotta admit, the kid can really play ball. Last season in college, Ja'Cory averaged 16 points and 5.2 assists on shooting splits of 49% from the field, 41% from three, and 83% at the free throw line. He's playing in the NBA Summer League, and in his first game, he shot three from six from beyond the arc. Not a bad start. I'm looking forward to watching Ja'Cory play some more games in a Warriors uniform. Next off, let's move on to the shooting guards. Shooting guard number one, Clay Thompson. Just dribbles into a three and buries it up. Just like his fellow Splash Brother Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, the beast of the bay, has no need for introductions. Before his injury, Clay Thompson was one of the best two-way players in the league. He's capable of taking over games himself, as evident from his 37-point quarter. And he's capable of defending at a real high level, as evident from his NBA All-Defensive Second Team selection. In his last season, Clay averaged 21.5 points per game while shooting 47% from the field, 40% from three, and 82% at the free throw line. Speaking of his injury, fellow warrior Kevon Looney recently said, he's doing good. His rehab is gonna be a long process, but he's looking really good now. He's getting stronger, he's really attacking, he's really locked in. It's probably the most focus I've probably seen Clay in a long time, so I'm really excited to get him back. Me too, Kevon, me too. Anyway, moving on. Shooting guard number two, Justinian Jessup. Absolutely, and, and you know, having seen him now play, so much different. Nice three there. The Warriors drafted Jessup in 2020, late in the second round. However, Jessup decided to play in Australia last season, where he averaged 13 points per game on shooting splits of 42% from the field, 34% from three, and 75% at the free throw line. Jessup stands six foot seven and is hoping he can be the Duncan Robinson for the Golden State Warriors. Shooting guard number three, Moses Moody. Young's backcourt guards. Moody for three, it's good. Moses Moody was the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft and is considered a steal for the Warriors. Moody stands six foot six and just finished his lone college season at Arkansas where he averaged about 17 points on shooting splits of 43% from the field, 36% from three, and 81% at the free throw line. He's 19 years old, and if he can defend at a real high level and knock down his jump shots, he'll be everything the Warriors want and more. That's it for the two position. Now let's move on to the small forwards. 
Small forward number one, Andrew Wiggins. It's so funny with that pretty jumper as they find Wiggins. How about a pretty lob? Yeah. They're top blocking him too. That was you can call him Mr. Consistent, or you can call him Maple Jordan. To be honest, as long as he stays aggressive on the basketball court, either nickname is fine by me. Last season, Wiggins averaged 18.6 points while shooting 48% from the field, 38% from three, and 71% at the free throw line. Wiggins also became one of the better two-way players in the league, and if there was ever an NBA all-defensive third team, he'd be on it. Moving on. Small forward number two, Otto Porter Jr. Westbrook was on the floor. Otto Porter Jr. Is that a second? Otto Porter was offered a lot more money from other teams, but decided to take the veterans minimum to join the Golden State Warriors because he's a smart guy and understands that there's a championship to be won in the Bay Area. Otto Porter has battled with injuries the last few years, but recently reported that he's feeling in tip-top shape. Standing six foot eight, the Missouri native has career averages of 11 points per game while shooting 48% from the field, 40% from three, and 79% from the free throw line. If healthy, Otto Porter will make the Warriors bench really, really, really dangerous. Moving on. Small forward number three, Jonathan Kaminga. Nice move. Kaminga was recently signed with the number seven pick in the 2021 draft, and many argue that if he had gone to college, he would have been battling Cade Cunningham for that number one draft pick position. Standing six foot eight, Kuminga is really athletic and can jump so high that his head can pretty much touch the rim. Last season in the G League, an 18-year-old Kuminga averaged about 16 points and seven rebounds per game in a league where the average age is 25. He's capable of playing lockdown defense and is a terror in transition. I look forward to seeing his growth with the Warriors. Last off is small forward number four, the 2015 Finals MVP. That's right, Andre Iguodala. Here's Ariza, bouncing for Iguodala's three. Kaboom! Oh Andre Iguodala was recently signed for the veterans minimum. Although he isn't as young as he was when he battled against LeBron in the 2015 Finals, Iguodala still believes he can contribute at a high level. Steph Curry recently went on to say this about Iggy. The dude is motivated. He's in good shape mentally and physically. And to know it's somebody that's been around, knows how we operate, can help the young guys, can be the eyes and ears in the locker room and on the court to help unlock some potential. It's gonna be awesome. Now, moving on to the power forwards. Power forward number one, Draymond Green. Just a handful of games recently. Green posting hero, Scorty. Nothing needs to be said about Draymond. Fearless, leader, or as Steve Kerr says, the heart of the Warriors. Draymond Green is determined to improve his shooting this offseason and hopes to regain some of his 2016 form where he shot 39% from three. Moving on to power forward number two, Juan Toscano-Anderson. They do. In terms of uh, how someone guards Steph physically, Juan Toscano-Anderson fly. The Oakland native made big strides last season, moving from a two-way contract to a full-time NBA contract JTA can do it all. Cut with the ball, shoot the three ball, defend at a high level. He can fit in with almost any lineup, and the man plays with a ton of energy. I look forward to seeing him progress even more next season. Power forward number three, Nemanja Belica. To go home happy. <laughs> Nemanja was recently acquired on a veteran's minimum contract and is a big who can shoot the ball. Standing at 6'10", Nemanja once shot the three ball at 41.9% on over 100 attempts in a season. He can space the floor and provide some interior size for the Warriors in 2022. Now, let's move on to the centers. Center number one, James Wiseman. Jake Lehman sent away by Wiseman. And then Wiseman running the floor. Wiseman straight. Just like everyone else, I'm looking forward to how James Wiseman improves in his second season. Most centers, including superstars like Anthony Davis, don't actually perform too well in their first year, but they usually make a big leap in year two. With an NBA season of experience under Wiseman's belt, the question is now, can he play to his potential? And if he does, the NBA better watch out. Center number two, Kevon Looney. Off the Iverson cut. Nice two-man game with Looney. Nice. Looney. I'd like to call this guy 
Mr. Right Time, Right Place. Kavon Looney is a solid player who always makes the right play and hustles hard. He's constantly battling and was part of the best three-man combinations for the Warriors in 2021. That's 15 players, and while changes may be made to the roster, I believe this is the 15-man squad the Warriors will start the season with. It is a really deep team, definitely capable of winning a championship. Let's take a quick look at the possible death lineups and the depth of the bench once the playoffs arrive. Well, to be honest, if James Wiseman and Draymond Green start hitting their open threes at close to 40%, that's a death lineup in and of itself. I mean, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Wiggins, and Wiseman? If Wiseman just focuses on the DeAndre Ayton stuff this season, that is still a really good lineup. But you can swap him out for a healthy Nemanja, Otto Porter Jr., or JTA. All who have a bit of size and length and can shoot the three ball at about 40%. Anyway, when the starters go on to take their rest, coming off the bench you have Jordan Poole, who will probably make a leap from year two. You have JTA, who will do a little bit of everything, Otto Porter Jr., who is good enough to be a starter, and Nemanja Belica. Don't forget about Andre Iguodala either, who can also come in from time to time and play some good defense. I haven't even gotten to the young guns like Kuminga, Moody, Jaquari, or Jessup, who could be huge X-factors, depending on their development. The Warriors are going to have one of the best starting fives in the league, and their bench is stacked with shooters, and they have a lot of young talents that are brimming with potential. Offense and defense, the Warriors are going to be at least, at least 10 to 12 deep, which means Steph, Clay, and Draymond can take rest from time to time in order to gear up for the playoffs. Everyone else these days is just talking about the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers, but they best be careful. There is a storm brewing in the Bay. Oh, by the way, Speaking of a storm, Jonathan Kaminga is going to be dangerous, and the NBA should have never let the Warriors draft him. I am serious. Don't believe me? Watch this video then, where I go over exactly how dangerous this number 7 pick is, and how lopsided it's going to be when he reaches a bit of his potential. It's crazy, guys, and the Warriors as a whole could quite possibly be even better than when KD was on the squad. Anyways, click on the video, guys, watch it, and I'll see you on the other side.